hello. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for having us. Um, when, uh, when we were thinking about how to structure this, um, we thought it was more interesting to have like an open conversation. Um, I think it's uh, exceptional to have Javier Illán. Uh, Javier is, is uh, one of the most important entrepreneurs that I think is currently in the hotel scene in Spain, but especially a reference in luxury, you know, all his life since you were started in the family business, no? focused to luxury development and repositioning, both in the residential segment and now in the hotel segment with Millennium Hospitality. Millennium um, started, I guess, around 2020. Yeah. And it Nine currently years. is um, has accumulated over 500 million in investment in 11 projects, always focused to luxury hotels um, in prime locations, in prime destinations in Spain and Portugal. No? Um, before that, I think the residential developments that Javier did in Madrid were probably uh, uh, the first projects of luxury quality including Independencia, which is probably the, the, the flagship of the development. No? So it's, um, I think, you know, the, the first question I wanted to, to share with, with you and, and with Javier is, is about luxury, no? which is the, the focus of this conference. And with his experience and your experience and, and in, in residential and in hotels, what is luxury for you? No? Thank you very much, Juan, and, and thanks for the invitation. Um, uh, as you were mentioning, uh, uh, we, we started working around 20 years ago, and our view of the market, it was that we have here in Spain, we have an incredible market, we have a great uh, country, great cities, but the reality, we, we didn't really have nothing that it was really luxury. When you get around the world, you find small countries, uh, countries with less clients, less, less tourists, and even they have a, an, an incredible offer of luxury. When, when we start with a residential uh, model, the, our point is, is really do something that it was done in, uh, all around the world for many years, is do this piece kind of service apartments where you have your, your swimming pool, your spa, your, your, your a lot of things on where you live. Um, people was demanding that and it, it wasn't a reality on, on the market, but when you, when you do that, there is a, a demand if you create the offer. And our view in the hotels, it was similar. We, we, we really have been investing in hotels uh, since 2009. Uh, we start buying existing hotels and whatever. Uh, we, we are the owners, we don't operate nothing. Uh, we are a real estate company, we are, we are a SOFIMI. And, and when we start thinking about uh, where was the needs of the market, what we, see, what we saw on, on 2019, it's, we, we have an incredible amount of, of, of tourists. It's increasing every single year. But the country really always offers the same. That is this very, very good four stars, Melia, NH, or wherever. They do an incredible model that is, the, for me, the best four stars of the world. But the reality, that is not a five star. The different answer in your question is when you think about luxury, you are not only selling in space to, to, to have a bed, to, to sleep, or whatever. What you are selling is an experience. And when you do that experience, you need to do more things that just have a, a nice assets in a, in a nice location. Uh, of course, you need the best locations for the best brands, but there is a huge amount of brands all around the world that they have created that experience. And when you go to a, a Marriott Four Seasons or Mandarin, whatever brands, uh, you really know what are you going to receive, what, what, what they create for you. And that is what we didn't have in, in, in Madrid, and even in Spain, but in Madrid it was a, a clear point. And there was an incredible lack of, of hotels. Even us being in the business, people come to Madrid and say, which one is the best hotel? I say, you know, we, we don't have any good hotel in Madrid. <laughs> that was the reality. We didn't have. We didn't have. The point now is in, in five years, and even with COVID and all that stuff, we, we, we have increased so much the, the, the offer. When you, when you increase your offer and, and, and make this luxury kind of, of, of offer, you receive the clients that you want to receive. That is the, 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 the top clients that they spend money, that they go to the restaurants, they go to the shops. Then you really create uh, the, 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 the model of tourists that I think in, in Spain we should choose. Is we should think about we are not the cheapest of the world anymore. Uh, we, we were in that moment. Now we, what we have to sell is what we have. We have an incredible country uh, structure all around. 
airports, trains, and a lot of things. We have a gastronomy and, and cultural offer all around the country. And what we didn't have, and we are now people like us and us creating, <coughs> is, the, is the experience that we didn't have uh, all around the country. And I think it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the way to improve uh, our income, as is the way that don't create a massive uh, tourist country where it's not, uh, I think, what I think is the worst idea for our country. Yeah. And, and luxury, to, to resume, is, is people have to believe that what they, the, the amount that they are paying, they are receiving something that is a different kind of experience that they can receive in other cheaper hotels. Okay, following on, on the line of, of your core business, which is to own the hotels, to invest, convert, redevelop hotels into luxury to, to fit or to cover that, that open space or that need, no? In your decision making, I think it's of course clear you need to find the iconic building in the prime location in the right destination, but how do you select the product or what is, how, how do you uh, work with the different brands to see which one fits better and what operating model fits better? Of course. I mean, our view of the market is only on iconic assets in the best cities, and, and the first of all is you, you have to realize that some very good cities that we have in Spain, they, there is not an existing demand of luxury. You don't have that type of client, even if the city it's a good city. Then the point you only have to go to cities where there is an existing demand and you can create the offer. Uh, really, the brand that you can choose, it's, 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 it's a complicated uh, <laughs> process, but the point is some buildings uh, are useful for some brands and some others are not. Then the, the, the building that you find is, is really a point, a very important point, of, because the size or the kind of, of, of the building or even the location. No? And even the cities for us uh, makes you choose one or, or other operators. If you know all around the, 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 the global market of hotels, hospitality, there is like two or three uh, huge uh, branch structures. Marriott is the biggest, Accor, Radisson, and an independent branch, but all of them very good. But the point is, what they really have is a huge tail of, a channel of, tail of sales. Then if you want to sell more in Europe, maybe you can choose one that is more focused in Europe. If you're thinking by the American uh, visitor, maybe another uh, kind of brand that they are stronger down there makes, you uh, makes the decision. But in some series like in Madrid that we have three and, and soon I hope so four uh, hotels, the point is you have a lot of good hotels right now. They have created the, the Rosewood, uh, Four Seasons, Mandarin, all of them are here. Uh, and the point is you have to think about the experience. What we were talking before is, uh, do I want to have another hotels in the same kind of, 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 of brands, if it changes the brand of the same uh, kind of hotel, or I want to create an experience, a different one? Then you have some independent companies like Six Sense, like, like Nobu, like most of them, that they are in the luxury segment, but what they sell really is a different experience that what they, you can find in the other brands. So going into into Madrid, no, mm -hmm. which I think it's the foremost example of mm -hmm. of the evolution of a destination, I think, and, and, and we've shared this view with a lot of people that before COVID, Madrid was on the path to evolve. Mm -hmm. I think from Millennium, you you did a bet on Madrid even much yeah. earlier than, than COVID, but it is true that the, the aftermath of COVID, it's, it's been amazing in Madrid, I think at all levels, no? with, with very high standard hotels, new brands. How, how do you see that evolution in Madrid? Because you, you saw that or you were betting on that before it happened. No? How do you see Madrid <coughs> after COVID and how do you see the future of Madrid? No? Yeah, I, th I think Madrid has, has suffered an incredible transformation in the last 10 years. I mean, in, in Spain, even being the capital, really Barcelona was the driver on luxury in, in Spain. They did so well after the, the Olympics and they, and they create that 
luxury kind of city that, 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 that we were expecting to have in Madrid, but we didn't. And I think all the political issues, are, they, have, they have been important about the, the, the governments that, that we have in Madrid and Comunidad and Ayuntamiento, of course, help. Uh, because even if you want to transform the city, if, if, if the politics don't, don't go in the same way, it's, it's a difficult thing. And we can see that in Barcelona, that it's happening yeah. in the other part of the, the, other of the history. But the reality is, uh, Madrid had everything perfect to be one of the best cities of, of, for tourists of, of Europe because we already had a lot of things, not, not the offer on luxury. And I think we have improved so much our idea of receiving people all around the world. I think all the movements around the South America has been very good for us. I mean, those countries, they have their political issues or whatever, and we are. I think much better than then at the moment, and people, very good kind of, of, of people has, has come here like tourists and even to buy their home and, and, and live here with us. And all that uh, has created a, a, a very good uh, standard for, cre for, for start growing the city. The, the city uh, right now I think is maybe uh, the, the best destination in Europe, but I think and, and really you see that with the operators. They are, all of the operators that are here, they are happy, but the, the ones that they are not here, they want to come. But we are talking the same about the, the people of the restaurants, restaurants all around the world, and all, all this nightlife or whatever that we have, that mix of, 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 of uh, luxury clients that they are looking for business, uh, they can find it here. But even we have the laser, that is the, the most important thing of us. And I think Madrid, if, if we don't do nothing wrong during the next four years, and I think the political issues are, are important in the next four years, uh, we, we should have, for me, the best uh, city of Europe for, for tourists. Well, no, that's, I, I tend to agree a lot, no? And well, before, before we, we go, and, and something that is important, you, you currently have three projects going in Madrid. And I, I wanted to understand, as you were saying, you, know, you, you get very much involved in the decision making of selecting the operators, so you are not a passive investor. Um, you try to fit needs, and of course, now that you have the Four Seasons, you have the Mandarin, you have the Edition, you, know, you have the Thompson opening also, or, or just open, and you have the usual suspects of Santo Mauro's and the Palace and everything. Um, where are you fitting your product and how are you working to have three different products coming into the market, no? I think that we have products, we have hotels all around Spain. And I mean, every single part of the city, it's a different city and looks for a different kind of client or even experience. If you see San Sebastian, for example, what we have is a, an incredible asset in front of Miraconcha or whatever, but the size of the asset, it wasn't the biggest. Then what we choose down there is, is, is an operator that can create income on, on the lower floor with a restaurant like Nobu, and even you have the experience in the upper floor. But I mean, it's, it's, it's the asset makes me make, make us choose one of the other operators. When you come to Madrid that you have uh, several offers, what you have to think is about where do you want to position your, your assets? Uh, our hotels, what we want to do is be one of the best of the best of the cities. That is what is happening right now in Bilbao uh, with the hotel that we are opening, uh, that we opened this year, and the, and the one in Seville that you opened uh, last year. Um, but when you, when you come to Madrid, uh, you have, I mean, two of the top luxury hotels like Mandarin and, and Four Seasons, then you can choose to compete with them in the same model or look for a luxury brand that offers something similar, but not that uh, uh, competition so direct. Uh, when the, the asset that we have in Plaza Canalejas, just in front of the Four Seasons, we were talking with Marriott, and, and we were choosing between San Regis and JW Marriott. San Regis is really a competition, direct competition in price with Four Seasons, but the asset is it's, it's a small asset than the other, and even and I think that the hotel is going to be better, we decided to choose JW, where it's a, a luxury brand from Marriott. It is the, it's the first luxury uh, a brand from Marriott, but you are something like 15% under the price of the Four Seasons. We prefer to choose that one, because what we want to do is a better hotel than them. We want to be in the same place, the same location, doing a different experience with a different brand, and even if it's a little bit cheaper, it will be perfect. When we choose Nobu on Alcala 26, which is like 300 meters from the other one, it, uh, the decision it was a different one. As we have most of the brands down there, 
we wanted to create a so different experience than the other hotels. We don't want to compete with e any of them, even we are the owners of two of them in the same in the same block. What we want to do, it's a different kind of brand, independent brand like Nobu. We will have a 900 meters restaurant, um, um, nightlife, uh, gastronomy, and whatever we will attract, uh, and it will be an offer for the, for the for the locals even or or the, or the or the clients. And the rest, we want to do some kind of bigger rooms, better rooms, something uh, cozy, more more like a boutique hotel, 50 rooms, not thinking about the massive client, and the price, of course, will be higher, but you, you don't really compete thinking about if you are going to the Four Seasons, JW, or Nobu, because they are three different things. In the other one that we have already bought in, in Thorilla, we are thinking about something uh, being like an, a, a, a complement to our JW Marriott, who is so close, uh, and even thinking, in, we, we haven't decided for the moment, something of the luxury brands of Marriott we have created for us some kind of experience. It's incredible because we have received like seven offers, uh, seven different kind of operators. But uh, when you are so close, you have to think if you want to compete against you or not and decide that we are negotiating another asset so close to the area. And if we finally bought it, we, buy it, we will think about something so much different to the other three of them. Our view is, as, as you know, we don't really buy existing hotels, not because we love to work more than the rest. The point is, if you want to fit a, a luxury brand international experience into an existing hotel, the, 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 the sizes and the rooms and the everything, it doesn't fit. Then we will love to create things with our partners that are the operators. And that's more or less where, how we decide and, and choose the, the right brands, the best brands for the best assets. Yeah, it's great, great to hear that there is a space for everybody and, and the new exciting openings. No? Yeah. We have and everybody one, improve. Uh, yeah. When people talk about, do you think that we have a, too much luxury projects in in Madrid? I think I think we have something like a thousand new rooms, luxury rooms, and we have six million visitors. You know? yeah, I think we, we 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 still need offer, and if everybody improves their hotel, it will be good for all of us. I think I totally agree, and, and we see on our side how increasing the, the, the level of the, of the offer provides uh, a higher demand. One last question. I, I guess we, we, we are running out of time, but I think it's, it would be very interesting to have your personal final thought, considering you know, your experience, your focus on luxury, your exposure not only in Madrid, but as you were saying, Bilbao, San Sebastian, of course, in Andalusia, heavily on the beach also. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see 2023 coming? All these uncertainties, everything that we are already suffering and all the th threats that we see in the future. And how do you see that in terms of threats and opportunities, of course? I mean, the, the, the reality of our last three years all around the world is uh, we are done with everything can happen. And the reality is we have suffered COVID and Philomena here and many things in the Ukrainian world right now. And, and the good thing of this is, is even in, during COVID, people who were able to, to go for holidays, to spend time outside of their home, they did it. And that is something incredible because in that moment, maybe you can die if you move from your home. And in that summer 2020, most of the people try to go to the beach or, or whatever area. Uh, and the reality is, 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 is being a tourist, uh, move around the world is part of our life. People is not allowed to live always in the same place and wherever, and that is something that is inside all of us. Then the reality is even we have problems in the next year that I expect that, that we should have problems all the uh, uh, world economy. Uh, tourists is not going to suffer, and at least I think it's not going to suffer in the luxury part of the, of the segment. Uh, the, the, well, our real challenge are more about something about the cost. The energy cost now is an incredible and crazy thing that, that it, it makes so worse the, the numbers of, the, of any business. And the other point about, about talking about Spain is the, the, the salaries and all that cost is a reality that, 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 that can compromise the growing of the market. Then I think if, 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 if the energy comes back to, 
I don't know which prices, but normal prices, reasonable. Good for <laughs> reasonable prices, and even salary, we, we should think that we are a service country. We have a huge amount of people that could work if we all create research for everybody. And if we try to do, everybody has to have an incredible salary, but there is only a part of the, of the market that is going to work, that, that, that is not going to be a good idea. And I think the, the government around Spain should think about uh, the numbers of the people who really invest and create that, that jobs. You know? And that, that is my, my main problem, or our main problem in the numbers of, of any operator. The reality about the, the, the world uh, evolution in, in luxury, I think is, just to finish, people, the, the people is looking for security and is looking for offers, um, but being safe is so important. Spain is one of the safest uh, destinations of the world. And we shall also take care of that because the reality, if we keep, if we keep being safe here, uh, we will attract a lot of people. There is no so many destinations around the world that you can feel safe like you do in Spain. And that is another important thing. Well, thank you very much, Javier. I think you know, we had a, a glimpse of, of Javier and his project and, and his views, which I think uh, have been so successful up to now and, and so exciting going forward. No? So thank you very much for your time. You. Thank you all. And I guess it's lunchtime. Thank you.